Hi guys, welcome to Intercultural Communication with me, Claudia Tumba. I'm going to be talking to you about uh, understanding cultures. So I love to do this right at the beginning of our course because I think it sets a good foundation for what we're going to do for the rest of the semester. So I hope you follow along, you learn something and you teach me something too. Um, so we're going to start off strong with the cultural ice. So I want you to get familiar with this because it's gonna, you know, really make a difference in how we see people and how we see things. So when it comes to cultures, I think one thing that we can be so hung on is the surface culture. So it's literally what we see on top, which is stuff like food, music, games, holidays, fashion, dances, language, festivals, literature. And we can just put people in this box as that's who they are. That's the only thing that they are. But if you want to get a really good understanding of somebody, that's not what you need to look out for. What you need to look out for is the deep culture, right? Um, deep culture is who the person really is. So if you think about an iceberg, what you see on the top is very small, but underneath it, it can be a huge more detailed structure so we're looking at things such as communication styles and rules like how do you talk to people what type of body language do you have even just simple things like greeting people um changes depending on the culture that you're in concepts of time did you know time was a cultural thing like some people you know in in some people's cultures being on time is like they you have to be on time in another culture, time is like really relative. You might invite them to meet you for lunch at 12 and they come at 2 and they have no problem, but you might be offended. Notions of curtsy and manners, friendship. You know, I thought everyone thought the same about friendships until I came to Korea and then like age plays such a key role in friendships. Like, I have friends of all ages. My, one of my bestest friends, um, Earl, was way older than me, but I learned so much from him. It was never awkward to be with him. It was really, really great, and I miss him to this very day. I miss him a lot. Um, but when I came to Korea, there was just this, it's like, can we be friends? How old are you? You know, and I, that was very awkward for me. Attitudes towards senior citizens, oh my goodness, the shock that I felt, the culture shock I got when I came here and I saw old people picking up cardboard boxes, you know, cleaning toilets and just like sometimes it just looked really like raggedy and or pushing the carts. My heart was broken. I was like, why? Because I'm from a culture where young people or immigrants do those kinds of jobs or those kinds of things. But senior citizens, I'm like, shouldn't they be resting? That, to this day, I think I cannot get over that. That's one of the... I understand it because I know some people do it because they have no choice. Some people actually do it because they want to. Um, but still, it just feels so wrong to me. Um, approaches to religion, courtship marriage, decision-making, problem-solving, raising children, all of those things differ. For example, I know like Korea has such a, one of the lowest birth rates in the world. Many people ask outside of Korea wonder why, but if you come here and then you start to see like how lives are in families, the fact that, you know, kids, if they go to as many hagwons as possible, they have a better chance of success. You begin to understand wow it costs so much money to have kids and then the role of the woman and then the role of the man and then uh, 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 uh. you so when you look at deep culture you can kind of understand the person better and deep culture is not something that you're going to see on the first day or you you might see on you know in music deep culture you really have to come you really have to talk to people you have to read it takes more time all right, let's continue. So here is a picture of me. So on the surface, people see my hair. Everybody talks about my hair, but my hair is not my culture. <laughs> my hair is just something that grows from my head. But people see my hair. Maybe they'll ask me where I'm from. They'll definitely see my skin color. And they'll see things like, you know, the type of food that I like, the type of music that I like. Because of the type of jewelry I wear, 
a lot of t the times people are like are you into hip-hop <laughs> which i am and i am influenced by hip-hop style and hip-hop culture but um that's not really who i am i think what makes me me i would hands down say it's my faith so the bible christianity jesus makes me who i am if you want to define me i would rather be defined by that than anything else another thing is my influence you know born in congo raised in the uk and living in korea all of those places especially congo and the uk have such a big imprint on how i am how i function how i act my family also you know i got my values from my parents obviously and my family as well which are a bit of a mix of both i think um of both congolese culture as well as british culture as well so that's who i am the deeper surface of me as to why i do most of what i do it comes from my faith and it comes from what i believe in and how i grew up so what about you what does your deep culture uh, say about you or where do you get your ideas of the world and how things function i'd be curious to know that think about that because you're definitely going to be doing that for homework okay so why are we talking about culture anyways because we live in korea korea is a homogenous country there's just literally korean people that is changing in korea now you're definitely going to see lots of uh, international students you're definitely going to see international teachers teachers who come here still a big number of foreigners who come here are english teachers um from just you know different parts of the world what's well, mainly seven countries skilled workers korea is out there hunting looking for people especially in the tech industry um to come and work in korea um, mixed heritage children or families so where one parent is Korean and another parent is from a different country and I, I know uh, different couples like that as well and you also have factory workers a lot of the times farm hands and people who work in the factories are not always Korean they could be from other parts of uh, the world mostly uh, Southeast Asians as well so there is definitely opportunities in Korea to have cross-cultural communication so what are some things that I want you to keep in mind as we talk about this well number one is having a positive attitude and a desire to be culturally aware if you don't care we're not going to learn anything so in this class you have to be interested you have to want to learn about another culture besides your own um and to do that here are three things i want you to do be aware of your own culture so that means really knowing your own um cultural iceberg what is your country's cultural iceberg or what is your personal cultural iceberg like those deeper things really knowing those your biases everybody has them what are yours and your communication style as well another thing um if you want to kind of have good communication is to gain knowledge of other cultures which is what this class is for hopefully in this class we will try and learn we're not going to learn about many cultures because that's near impossible but you're definitely going to be exposed to one or two other cultures that you're not familiar with and i want you to be open-minded about that and also hopefully with our main assignment or you know the cultural project it means that you get to know what it's like to be from another culture by talking to uh, somebody from that culture as well all right the barriers so these are the things that can stop us from having good communication with other people and here is just a list these are just some things i'm sure there's a lot more but here are the major ones lack of knowledge it's all about not being knowledgeable about cultural differences can result in misunderstanding and misinterpretations of someone's actions so the more you know the more that you can be aware of your own actions of the things that you do and the things that you say i think just the more you know the better you can be the more you can be aware but if you don't know anything and you just focus just on your culture it's really hard to be able to know somebody else because you might misunderstand what they do what they say maybe what they choose to eat how they choose to dress all of those things 
it's really really important to be knowledgeable to learn fear um as a black person in this world i have been through you know people being scared of me and i if you know me i am one of the least scariest people ever like in school i did not fight anybody because i wasn't sure i could win the fight <laughs> like i'm just i don't even like confrontation however in korea i feel like this is what people see me as because i remember going into um a bakery to leju I went into Tuesday Judas and this little girl saw me and she started screaming like ah! she was saying what's up what's up mommy I'm so scared and I was not doing anything I was minding my own business I was just finding bread but she screamed and you know it broke my heart I was just like oh I couldn't even look at her in the eyes and it happens to me all the time with little kids now i understand it they haven't seen many black people and maybe they their parents are korean and they've only ever seen people that look like their parents and then suddenly one day they see another person i i can understand that it would be scary from a kid's perspective definitely but i've also had it where i'm just walking going it's usually going to the bathroom and somebody's coming out of the bathroom and then they're like oh my gosh you scared me oh my gosh you scared me like I'm like, <laughs> I understand, but it still hurts. It's still not easy to take. Stereotyping. This is defined as making assumptions about all people from a particular group that cannot be substantiated. All Asians are good at math. If you're Asian, are you good at math? Um, all black people can dance and sing. I know black people who cannot dance and black people who cannot sing. All Muslims are terrorists. Now, you know, even I had that thought. I once went to the airport. I always tell this story. And there was this guy and he had like a suitcase. Let's pretend this is the suitcase. And the suitcase was like wrapped in clear wrap. And then he kept on like going to with the suitcase and he would sit down and then he would move again. And then he would move again. He did not stop moving. And the whole time I was like, oh my gosh, this guy. And the reason why I thought he was a terrorist was because he had on, you know, out, an outfit that looked like he would be Muslim. So I'm thinking about the bag that is tightly sealed. I'm thinking about the outfit and I'm like, this is dangerous. But to be honest with you, if you actually look at the news, most of the time terrorists wear normal clothes because they do not want to draw attention. But I had this whole idea in my mind that he's got to be a terrorist because of the things that he wore. Stereotypes can be really, really harmful. They can be really, they can be so not good. Um, yeah, so be careful. Be careful about generalizing things. Um, be careful about just looking at somebody and then already making the decision as to who they are, who they might be, what kind of lifestyle they might have. Nonverbal communication. 70% of our communication is not verbal, right? What you're doing with your eyes, what you're doing with your hands, your body language. Like, you can show interest in somebody by how it, what you say, all of these things, by smiling, by how close you are to them or how far back you are to them. Um, it all means different things. So for me, you should talk to the person, you should ask them, you should get to know them, you should watch how they do things and what they do. One thing that is, you know, about closeness, some some cultures, if you come close to somebody, it means you're confident, you know, like a guy coming up to a girl, you're confident. But in another culture, it could mean that you're ignorant because you're not mindful of the personal space. Staring, oh my goodness. Again, being black in Korea, I get lots of stares. I think less, do you know, the funny thing is, the longer I stay in Korea, I think I'm less aware of the staring and I care less. But when I first came to Korea, I was very much aware of all the stares and sometimes the whispering, like, Papa, Papa, like, look over there, look over there. And it, it, I, I don't know, maybe other people have felt good, but for me, it never felt good. <laughs> Because on most days, I'm in a train or I'm walking. I'm just not in the mood for people to point and stare at me. 
and so it's not a comfortable thing and the other thing is like so many times in the trains especially in the train like um and mostly ajumas and ajushis like they would stare at me and when i stare back i think they're gonna go like this but they continue to look at me and i'm just like whoa and in the end i'm the one that's embarrassed and i turn away so that's really weird for me as well um whereas in my culture if somebody catches you staring you're supposed to pretend as if you're not staring which i think is what is the same in korea but not for the ajuma and ajashi they'll just stare right back at you again direct talk talking directly in english especially in england we go round like maybe you invite me to a party or you invite me for dinner i i, I don't want to come or i can't come i'm not gonna say i'm not coming or i don't want to come unless we're very very close and i know you and i can speak to you that way but normally i'll be like actually i don't think i really would have the time i would love to but i don't think it's gonna really work like we would say other things to just make the message a little bit softer rather than just being like no i'm not coming and then hand gestures as well can be a thing um authority again people you know show authority in different ways like when i came to korea um the first thing i noticed was you know with my principal my principal was like the god of the school if my principal sat down then we sit down if my principal starts to eat the cake then we start to eat the cake until my principal does something we're not doing that like that we may have fruit or food or a drink but we're waiting when the principal does it then we do it that was very new to me and very interesting to me physical touch um Again, Konglish is something that's interesting because some of the words that Korean people would use in English, I didn't fully know. I didn't know about this notion of skinship um, and this notion of kind of skin to skin contact. It's it's still really weird to me. I remember when I first arrived at Kyode, I was playing a game where um, you give each other commands, basically like an I dare you to do this. Um, so one girl was asked to or commanded to hug another boy in the class. They are not dating, but she just needs to go up to the boy and she needs to hug him. And for me, I'm like, it's nothing big. You know, my students are like, you know, 18 plus, you know, most of them, I think they were about 20 years old. So I'm like, it's nothing big. But lo and behold i saw one camera second camera third camera everybody and their cameras they're all anticipating this hug between this random girl and random boy and i was just like i don't get it it's just a hug but not scary but they're really hard to teach and nuance is like i would explain it as the feeling of something or the the, the hidden meaning that's how i would explain nuance I'm, although i'm not sure if it's exactly the correct meaning um pacing timing one thing that always bothers me and will always bother me in korea when koreans a lot of koreans speak english they just have this monotone they don't play with pitch and i always say if you're monotonous that means one line and you speak like this and you don't have any expression any excitement in your voice you just seem boring and uninteresting so it's it's important and one funny thing is being at Kyode, I see a lot of speeches, a lot of presentations. And it's always funny that my idea of a good speech or good presentation is always different from the Korean professor's idea of a good speech or good pre presentation. For me, I don't care if somebody is reading their speech as long as they have eye contact, they do jokes, like I'm involved. But for the Korean professors, if you don't memorize your presentation your speech not good even if you had eye contact even if you were exciting if you do not memorize not good speech which is, is different ideas all right i'm going to be posting and connecting you to uh this really great ted talk i love it it's by julian burrell he's a great guy who talks about effective communication um, so one thing that he says that I really like and I always use it is see the behaviors not so that means the behaviors that from the other culture the things that the other person does 
not from your own meaning, your own understanding, but from the meaning of others. So, like, for example, me saying that, you know, Korean professors prefer to choose a speech that is memorized. I need to see that not from my understanding as a British person, but to see it as a Korean person. Why is memorizing a speech important? I guess it makes you seem professional. It makes you seem like you took the time to prepare. You're more prepared than somebody who didn't uh, memorize their speech. So really learn to see things not from your own eyes and your own cultural iceberg, but from the other person. So it means kind of you become uh, someone else, basically. You see things from a different perspective. And another thing that he says that I really like is learn to be comfortable with what's uncomfortable. Trust me, dealing with other people, communicating with other people who are different from you, it can be so uncomfortable. Because sometimes you feel like, I'm so different from you. What do we have in common? And what can we share together? But if you learn to be uncomfortable, you'll soon become comfortable. And the reason why I say that is because a few years ago, I had a mission trip to Cambodia. At first, I, I had no idea what Cambodia is like. I didn't know anything about Cambodia. And I was scared that like, maybe I wouldn't like the food. Maybe the people might look at me funny. Like if already in Korea, being black is like a thing maybe in Cambodia again I would get the same thing staring maybe kids would be scared of me maybe they would say neg negative stuff about me however it was totally different I felt so good in Cambodia and I realized we had different things that were similar a lot of their dishes reminded me of Congolese dishes and that was so mind-blowing because I never thought um, Cambodia would ever have anything you know that could link to kind of what I know. And then they also felt the same. They were really anxious about us coming because most of us were black from African backgrounds. And they were like, we have nothing in common with people from that place. But to our surprise afterwards, we all became very good friends. We have, we have a situation right now. I'll come with Relax. I'm in planet. other almost you know staying with each other spending time with each other and we grew and we got to really really like each other and till this day we keep in contact um so in the next lecture we're gonna be i think we're gonna be face to face and we're going to be talking about how we can effectively communicate with people from other cultures i think um i'm going to be posting this ted talk as well as this lecture for this week because i think it's really cool. and i shall see you next time thank you very much for listening to my long